Hey, how is it going, everybody? Hope y'all had an awesome Christmas, and I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic New Year's. Hope y'all enjoyed the good old Christmas holiday season. Now, a couple of things before I get into this video. Uh, some of you guys may not know, but we opened a merch store, um, and all the merch that's on there is currently on sale until the 31st of December. It is all 20% off right now using code HS19TWEAK. There will be a link in the description to the merch store if you guys want to take a look at it. More stuff's going to be added in the uh, next few upcoming weeks. So if you guys want to check that out, the links to that will be in the description. Uh, another big announcement, guys. Tonight, the day this video goes up, Twitch Drops will be live on my channel from 9pm UK time until the 5th of January. What this means is, if you watch my stream with your Twitch account linked to your uh, Escape from Tarkov profile, you are eligible for drops. So we're not really sure what the items are. Some people are saying you can get T7 thermal monoculars, lab key cards, bitcoins, rollers, uh, other stuff like that. So it's really cool. So that's happening tonight uh, in like three and a half hours or so. Um, so if you guys want to do that, go to the Escape from Tarkov website, link your Twitch account with your uh, Tarkov profile. It's in the same place you claimed your Christmas gift. There's a purple button there that says link profile. So if you guys want to do that, check it out. So um, moving on from that, today we're going to quickly go over the whole podcast breakdown and we're going to go over the new patch notes that came out yesterday. Um, so yes, my dudes, uh, big shout out to Sev who uh, kind of consolidated a lot of this stuff together for me as a lot of you guys know. I didn't really get to see all of the podcast. I caught bits and pieces of it here and there. I was at home for the holidays. So Sev, like the absolute legend he is, consolidated a lot of this information into one post for me so I can go through it with you guys. So we're just going to very quickly skim through these. So let's get started. Um, the 1% health reductions on hatchlings is not the final attempt to fix the hatchlings. It's just an approach. It's supposed to be more of like a psychological impact on the hatchlings kind of thing. Um, and then the 1% health on team kill uh, is a preventative attempt to slow down skill cheesing and real world money vendors. So they're trying to stop people from, first of all, cheesing skills. And second of all, they're trying to stop those morons that are selling Tarkov money for real money on illegal websites. So that's part of the reason why they've done that. Um, everything is currently being tested and might be removed if it sucks. Nikita's words. So we just got to see how it goes. Uh, upcoming content. So this is the patch that is already currently in the game. The killer style tracksuit, the Twitch drops campaign, which is starting tonight. Bunch of new weapons and new gear so we'll get to that a little bit later on now next year exciting stuff streets of tarkov will introduce story missions uh streets will bring a new uh scav ai they will be more realistic with eating drinking and talking and sitting and low ready so we're gonna get more human-like ais which is cool uh bsg which to expand the work on streets and lighthouse at the same time replace all vegetation on all maps and add the end gameplay loop Final, uh, finally escaping Tarkov. This is not 1.0. So we're going to finally see what the final endgame loop for Tarkov is going to be next year. Uh, so that's really exciting. I can't wait to see the uh, story mode and what the idea is going to be with the endgame. Um, they wish to add a short single player tutorial where you start your story as a PMC. So a lot of people have been requesting this. Uh, it's going to help a lot of new players that come to Tarkov. Uh, I would rather there not be a tutorial and you just kind of have to figure it out for yourself. But the game's getting to the point now where it's getting a lot of attention and player retention at this point is important, so yeah. Um, and yeah, the players will start in a bombed terror group headquarters, so there you go. Now, Arena. Arena will be a combination of things with preset battles created by somebody in the lore, similar to a fight club with more murder, uh, which allows them to add anything they want in terms of gameplay, e.g. capture the flag, TDM, uh, deathmatch, search and destroy. So this is going to be the new Arena game mode. We haven't got a time on this yet or a time frame as to when this is going to be out. They just spoke about it briefly. So expect more news about that. Potentially after point 13 comes out, one of those uh, podcasts, they're probably going to talk about it a little bit more there. Uh, Co-op and offline mode. This is incredibly exciting. Nikita mentioned that they are considering allowing people to rent PVE servers. However, uh, they have many things that they would need to figure out before they can make this a reality. This is really cool. I really like the idea of being able to rent out a custom server. And hopefully they expand on this because I would love to see this feature be added to the game. Um, audio, right. Steam audio is still planned along with VoIP. We just have to wait. We just have to wait. It's just not ready yet. I think point 13 is likely going to bring VoIP and Steam audio. So we'll wait and see. We really do need that audio upgrade. It's going to be very nice. 
Uh, all right, so content. This is planned and upcoming content. We've got the compass and the GPS, which is planned to come. New hideout models, repair bench, tailoring bench, med repacking, mag packing, and the gym. So more new hideout things, which is very cool. I can't wait to see everything they're going to do with that. Uh, visual representation of crafting taking place. Making ammo would have the gunpowder and empty casings on the bench. We've got new ammo types, proper implementation on suppressors, durability, and sound related to subsonic rounds. So we are finally going to see durability on suppressors, which is... It's a good change. We'll have to see what it's like. Um, which will likely make suppressors more expensive and less widely available. So that's a good thing. Uh, two new hideout related skills, crafting and hideout management. Um, a fourth level for some existing hideout modules. So we're going to see a level beyond what we have at the moment for certain hideout modules. Uh, durability to graphics cards and the Bitcoin miners. Sell your graphics cards now while they're 300k each because I feel like they're going to crash. I don't know. I sold mine. I might have screwed myself, but I sold mine because I think they're going to crash. A uh, couple of cosmetic changes and a lot of customization options. Uh, uppers, lowers, facial customization, preset faces, facial hair and beards. So there you go. Uh, Nikita talked about wanting to make the game more accessible for people with disabilities, unable to control the game with mouse, keyboard and colorblind. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so they're obviously looking to make uh, the game a little bit more accessible to anybody who wants to play the game who has a disability. So that's nice to see. That's cool. Uh, right, upcoming features. We got weapon malfunctions and overheating. So using good quality ammo, good quality mag magazines and weapon condition. Uh, we're going to have to be a little bit more conscientious, conscientious of the parts that we're adding to our guns, I guess. And watching the conditions of our mags and stuff. Uh, we got faster transitions from rifles to pistols. So that's really cool for those of you that like to carry a sidearm with you. You'll be able to pull it out a little bit faster. Um, I heard somewhere too that they were actually adding a sling. I think it might have been in clean stream. Nikita said it. Uh, where you can add a sling to your gun and you'll just be able to swing it away and pull out your sidearm much faster. So that's probably what they're talking about there. Uh, we'll also have a new low ready position. Uh, grenade launchers, revolvers, double barrel shotguns, uh, customized weapon handling, uh, how you hold a certain weapon. So uh, a C-clamp. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm sure most of you guys will. Uh, customizable chest rigs are coming in the near future. Uh, advanced weight restrictions, negative drawbacks for being overweight. Finally. Finally. Um, new types of blood loss to accompany the new medical items. We've got prone leaning, uh, potential rolling and extended leaning uh, from the early alpha. So that's being re-implemented again. Opposite shoulder bracing to limit exposure to corners. Also left-handed blind fire. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got the watches and the compass, which we spoke about earlier. Uh, new content, new traders, uh, new loot. Uh, Fallout slash Project Zomboid style skill books. Okay, I never saw this. This is new to me. That sounds absolutely sick. It'd just be like another depth of your uh, soft skill progression. You, I guess you collect them and you put them in your hideout or whatever. That's pretty cool. Optimizations and streamer mode. Conceals names on death. Oh, thank God. Okay, that's good. Um, Nikita briefly also mentioned camo netting. So potentially referring to ghillie suits. Um, let's see here. What else we got here? Uh, he wants as many updates as possible this year. He hates, uh, one, one update a year. <laughs> well, now that they have, uh, Unity 2018, they should be able to push forward in the development a little bit quicker, I guess. Um, all right. So we've got new word about this. The, uh, Sanator, uh, the Shoreline Scav Boss will be a drugged out Scav Boss who will spawn in the lower levels of the resort or in the village on Shoreline. Okay. Very cool. Um, Cultus. Cultus will be added in the next year. They will have their own ranks, Initiate and Acolyte. Uh, this will include their own bosses. They will have a totally different AI that focuses on stealthy movement and melee takedowns. They will use a poisoned knife slash dagger. Uh, this can only be healed with an antidote uh, that will be rare, but also craftable. Nikita made it clear that they will be scary, only spawning at nighttime. Cool. We're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna see the cultists sometime this year, and a new scab boss. Or a, sorry, not a new scab boss. A scab boss for shoreline. So that's awesome. Um, now wipes. 2020 may may be the final year of wipes. However, Nikita min uh, mentioned uh, the potential for a second character that is specifically for a season type server pool that will have wipes. That's very good. Okay, this is not confirmed to be coming. However, so he probably just spoke about it, but didn't want to confirm anything on it. It's probably a little bit too early yet. Uh, merch. Merch is planned, but uh, planned to be coming. Nothing more has been said. Vaulting. Uh, he mentioned uh, that one of the leaks was considered showing it, um, but they didn't because it was a busy day. Um, 
they're already animating it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So it'll be coming sooner rather than later. So that's pretty interesting. Vaulting finally. Uh, Labs boss. Nikita mentioned that uh, it was never planned for Labs to have a boss. However, they did mention that they may add a terror group, security group, uh, basically a cleaner crew. Uh, the murder variety, not the sponges. Uh, that is set to eliminate loose ends. Okay, so this could potentially be a squad that will spawn in if you're the last player alive in labs, just running around looting absolutely free. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so that's about all of the uh, awesome news from the podcast. I will link... Uh, so basically, I have a list here of all the links uh, to like the timestamps and stuff like that in the uh, description. So I'll put all those down below if you guys want to see any of this stuff individually. Uh, they show like the new backpack, uh, the new ammo types, showing the MDR, the MP9 and all these other guns. So there'll be links to all of that in the description. I'll also have a video on the new guns coming out soon as well. So now we're going to go over the patch notes from yesterday. So the patch was successfully installed. There's a few hiccups with it. There was a couple of critical bugs that they figured out. They've already got them patched. There's a couple of other little things. Um, we're seeing like increased stutters and lockups right now. They're working on that. Um, so let's get into the notes and we'll see what has been done. So now in the weapon preset mode, after purchasing the necessary mods, players will be returned to the preset screen. This is something I've been saying for a long time. This is a really awesome change. Um, added the ability to disable the icons in the hideout. So you can press the I key to do that. New sound effects for the SKS. The suppressed SKS sounds fucking sick now. It sounds so sick, dude. Um, and the DVL sounds a little bit different too. A little bit chunkier. Uh, redesigned the Kiver uh, helmet model and they increased the fire rate of the P226. Now onto the new guns that have been added, the new weapons. So the DT MDR, which is a 308 MDR. It's very cool. Uh, the VPO215, which is the sniper rifle now that uses the Gexa and the EKO rounds uh, and the other ones as well. I can't remember if there's any others. I just remember EKO and Gexa. Uh, the SR25, which has been added, which is a very similar gun to the RSAS. They're both based on the same platform. The Orsus T5000 sniper rifle, which is another uh, 308 sniper rifle, has been added to the game as well. The MP9, which uh, uses 9x19 ammo, and its uh, other variant, the MP9N, which has a higher fire rate but using the same ammo type, has been added. If you haven't used this gun yet, it's like $250 from Peacekeeper, and it is, in my opinion, the best new gun they've added this patch. I love the MP9. It's my new favorite gun. Um, new types of rifle rounds have been added. The 762x54R. Um, and for the 762 by 51 as well. I can't remember the names of the ammo types off the top of my head, but one of them does 70 damage and 70 pen for the 762 by 54 r So that's going to be the new like meta SVD round or whatever, but it's very expensive. It's like a thousand rubles around from vendors. Uh, we've also got new weapon mods. We've got new clothes for USEX and bears, including the Abbey Bass tracksuit. So you got to kill Killa 100 times, which is what I'm currently working on to get the tracksuit unlocked. Uh, we have optimizations for various uh, uh, locations. Uh, fixed for single-use medicines, the use item was not displayed in the context menu. The inability to go into weapon presets through the handbook. The inability to go to weapon presets through the trade screen and flea market. Um, a bug where after building the zone in the hideout uh, for a second appeared a screen with conditions for the next level of the zone. Uh, bug with the display of the hideout zone icons after switching from another screen. A bug in which when changing weapons an optics lens appeared in the air. Uh, a bug in which players could move the hideout camera on the weapon preset screen. A bug on reserve in which an outdoor sound was played while in the bunker. A bug with the flashlights on weapons illuminated the background of the weapon presets menu. A bug where abruptly leaving the hideout after clicking the build button made it impossible to build this uh, improvement in the future. Ooh. Oh, okay. Whoa, that's a yikes. I feel bad for anybody who had that happen to most shit, man. That sucks. Uh, the display of ping value out of raid has been removed. Display of fuel cells in the generator window. Display of raindrops on weapons indoors. Um, setting the frame rate limit in the game no longer affects the frame rate menu. Uh, frame rate limit in the menu. Okay, that's cool. Uh, location of Jaeger's cache at the exit from the highway at the interchange. Oh, so I guess I guess they, they changed it? Oh, okay. Or maybe it's just one that wasn't accessible or something. Uh, display requirements for the zone window after construction slash improvement of a zone. Shoreline, exfil, access, availability display. Oh, so that's with the road to customs extract that wouldn't sometimes show up. Uh, various bugs leading to error 228, which I believe is the move error. 
I think that's the move error. Uh, a bug in which items uh, thrown away in raid cause the ground... Oh, could move on the ground. Uh, various localization fixes, uh, offline game impossibility fixes, and improved grenade sync. Hell yeah. So there you go. That is the patch notes rundown and also the podcast rundown. Once again, huge shout out. Thank you so much, Sev, uh, for hooking me up with that consolidated list of awesome stuff. Uh, I appreciate you, man. You're the best. Um, so yeah, there we go. Lots of very, very exciting things coming for EFT in 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have a friend who hasn't seen the patch notes yet, make sure to shoot it their way. If you've got a Discord, throw it in there. Send it to your friends. Share it around. Share it with your family. Share it on Facebook. Uh, and again, guys, drops, Twitch drops tonight, 9 p.m. UK time, twitch.tv slash tweak. It's down below. You don't even have to be subscribed. You don't even have to be subscribed. Just, you don't even have to follow. You just watch the stream. I would love it if you guys would subscribe and follow. That would be great. I'd love you for it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see hopefully a bunch of you guys on the stream later on for the drops. So guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, my dudes. Also, raid review is coming soon. Raid review is coming soon. Peace out, dudes.